Paula Jo from Cedar Quilts with a free motion Friday for you. Come and look at this border that I'm doing. I've told you before that I oftentimes try to use the corner of my blocks for spacing. And one of the things I like to do is use a ruler that just has a center mark. It doesn't have um, increments all the way along. It just has one in the middle. And so what I've done over here is I I'm marking my border. I'm doing just a simple little crosshatch in the, in the outer border here. And I'm marking across from the corner of my block with a heat erasable friction grip highlighter marker. And then again, the, it's hard to see that there's actually a block here, but again, I marked the corners of those blocks. And then I used this this um, ruler to mark the center. And I don't need to actually measure, I just have to see, okay, I've got about a quarter inch there, I've got about a quarter inch here, here's center, and then I mark it. And so I've marked those blocks, and now I'm just gonna do a simple little crosshatch, wiggle, 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 and um, I'm gonna use my ruler, but I'm actually gonna be doing a wiggle line rather than a straight line. Wiggle ditches are more forgiving, there's just a little more, little more um, forgiveness for the eye. So I'm going to be holding my ruler and then I'm gonna be wiggling against it and I wanna to try to stay about a quarter inch away from my margin over here. And then just go. And then go to the next one. And there we go. And now, another little trick, a little extra bonus here. We're going to turn off the light. We're going to use a little side light. And then you can see the texture on there. But isn't that just so cool and so easy? And no math. So because this block quits here, and there's this little extra inch here, I wanted to make sure that I'm marking at the end of the block so that everything stays even. So block and block, and then in the middle of the block, and then block. So again, this is just a nice, quick and easy, no math way to mark your borders using the existing things on your quilt, the corners of the blocks, and then just a, a simple ruler to mark the halfway point, or you could eyeball it. Um, and if you wanted to, you could do the corners of the blocks and then you could do thirds or whatever. But um, it, it's just a nice, quick, easy, no math way to mark. I'm going to lock my stitches. 
And as I always say, there are three spots that you want to be aware of. Your starting point, your stopping point, and where will you be going next? In free motion, you, you want to be looking ahead, just like driving a car. You want to aim for your next spot and keep turning your ruler so that you can see your next spot. Sometimes you have to be above it or sometimes you have to be below the needle so that you can see your, your marking. And I look ahead to my next mark and then I, I look at the coordinating spot above it next to the inner border. And yeah, it works really well. Nice and easy. Now, as I start going back in the other direction, again, I want to keep my ruler out of the way so I can see my markings. So sometimes I'm above the needle, sometimes I'm below the needle, but it's, it's a little harder sometimes to hold it at the right angle when you're coming backwards. And uh, the other thing that you'll notice here is that I don't have my ruler base connected onto my quilting machine. So it's, it's a little harder to balance everything evenly. And once in a while, my hopper foot is jumping over the top of my ruler. So it makes it a little harder. If you're caught unaware with that, it can kind of startle you a little bit. And so you have to be careful not to, not to jump too much when that happens, but just just like driving a car, you gotta be a little bit careful, and, and it it all works out. But I'll show you in just a second here about that ruler base. So this is my ruler base that I was just talking about, and if I don't have the ruler base on, um, I can balance my ruler on just that little narrow beam this way and that way and whatnot, but it is so much easier to use the ruler base and now I can't tip as much. It's much easier to stay nice and flat and keep that ruler where it's supposed to be. Um, if, hopefully I can keep my arm out of the way here, if, if I raise this up, the needle up, the hopping foot comes up far enough that I could accidentally get my ruler underneath there. And if you, you catch it right away, it just kind of bounces on there and you get it all the way again. It's no big deal. But if you jump too much when it happens because you're scared and you push that ruler, if you're pushing too hard against the ruler and that ruler goes underneath there, if that needle comes down with the ruler in there, you're going to bust a needle, first of all, and that can go flying, and you'll probably ruin your, your ruler. So you want to be careful. You don't want to be pushing really hard against the hopper foot with your ruler. You just want to use it as a guide. It's just, it's just to balance, um, just a, a nice guide. You don't want to be pushing too hard on it. So yeah, whenever possible, use your ruler base. Sometimes I go without if I'm just doing a little bit of ruler work, but yeah, it's always safer to have the ruler base on there. And then in the corner, because we have this little extra offset because of the inner border, um, rather than trying to continue my, my triangles here, my diamonds, um, I decided to stop here and then I put in a little corner block and this whole quilt is based on eight point stars and I have them throughout. So I just put a little eight point star in the corner and it looks darling. So thanks for coming for this free motion Friday. Come back and see me again. Toodaloo.